Apple Stump Bushcraft with you today. We're going to look at this three compartment getaway bag that I put together. Not designed specifically for either urban or backcountry survival. Could be used in either place. And we'll see that there are some decent utilities in there. It has three compartments. There's a smaller one in the front, medium sized one in the middle, and a fairly large one in the back will start in the front compartment. So I'll just pull out what I have in there. First is uh, some snare wire. And this is rather stout wire, I'm not sure of the gauge. But it's pretty springy. And it could be made into a snare loop to trap a rather strong animal, a larger animal, badger or something like that. Next we have, I believe this is 24 gauge wire for a snare. There's about two feet of it right there. <clears throat> and there's a couple of zip ties. Pretty handy for binding poles together for a shelter or making a carry strap to carry some game on that you might have trapped or killed. A couple of rubber bands. Good for starting fires, good for binding things together. Wire saw. And I haven't used this one before. I have used wire saws before so I know how to use them and you probably do too. So we won't bother to unwrap all that, but this is a good stout one. I think it's uh, triple strand. Very aggressive feel to it. Good for cutting, oh, probably inch to two inch diameter wood. There's a little sewing kit the kind that you get in a hotel. It's got a couple of needles in there, several kinds of thread, a couple of buttons, and a safety pin. Could come in handy for repairing clothing items. <clears throat> and this is a Schrade Stockman knife. This particular one has something of a saw blade on it which is why I included it. <clears throat> so it has a sheep foot blade, a clip point, and uh, the saw blade. This is a decent knife. You can skin small game with it, clean fish, clean game, possibly saw up some smaller pieces of wood or make feather sticks or fine shavings to start a fire. I try not to include things in my kits that are real expensive that I include things that are functional. <clears throat> I like eye bolts and I believe I put two of them in here. You can screw these into a tree, there's one, and then run a line through them and tie it off. And the neat thing about it is they're fairly easy to recover out of the wood when you uh, get finished with it. couple of big safety pins. So that's the first pocket. I think we've cleaned it up. Okay. So I'm going to kind of push this stuff to the side. Okay. Second pocket. A little more stuff in there. That is coffee filter. It's the triangular shape for filtering water. Helpful if you have some kind of a reservoir to collect the water in. <clears throat> um, the state of things being even in uh, the wilder parts of nature, and I'm in, I'm in southern Idaho, but I have pretty easy access to the Frank Church <coughs> River, No Return Wilderness, and some other areas that are fairly wild. But even in those wild areas, unfortunately, you can find old beer cans, old pop cans, plastic water bottles tin cans, all kinds of things that you could conceivably use to collect water. This is about, oh, let's say 20 feet of um, rayon, waxed rayon rope like you, or twine that you would use with a sewing awl, one of those sews all or um, 
kits that you can use to stitch leather with and so on. Really good for making repairs. You can use it for shoestrings. You can use it for fishing line. You can use it to uh, use for fire tinder because it's waxed. It'll burn for quite a while. Could conceivably use it to stitch up a wound, although I would really want to either be unconscious or have consumed a significant amount of alcohol before I let somebody sew me up with that stuff. But emergencies are what they are. This is a little flashlight that I got at a local uh, survival store and it's fairly bright. I don't know how many lumens it is, but it only takes a couple of batteries to run it. And you don't get at them that way. It may only have one in it actually. I might have two. It's just got one. One double A. I found with this one, it's an aluminum body, I found with this one that when it sits for a while it doesn't always come on when you push the button. But if I do this with it, just twist that top a little bit and then um, do it, it'll work every time. So it's a nice bright light. I don't think I paid more than three or four dollars for it. And it has uh, some kind of dinosaur on the front of there on that logo. I'm not sure exactly what that is. But it's a decent light. <coughs> this is a pair of uh, non-latex uh, gloves. They're kind of exam gloves. I happen to be a registered nurse, although I did not get these at the hospital. I bought them at a in a box at the local Harbor Freight Tools store, but these are large and they're uh, um, non-latex gloves. Good for cleaning out a critter if you happen to catch a rabbit or something and you're a little afraid of tularemia or whatever might be in there. <clears throat> MRE toilet paper. Lifeboat matches. Looks like there's six or eight of them in there. Eight looks like. Those are really good because if they get wet they'll still burn. You can stick them down in water after you light them and pull them out and they burn. You can put them in the ground and cover them up with dirt and take them out and they'll still be burning until they reach the end. So they're really hard to extinguish as long as you carry some kind of a matchbox striker for them. If you don't have anything to strike them on they will not strike on any surface and they're essentially useless without a striker. So there's a striker in this kit somewhere I'm sure. <clears throat> and this is a K-Bar Dozier design knife has a spear point. It's fluorescent orange, hunter orange, so if you drop it you can find it. has a pocket clip, has a stud for opening with one hand. It's a lock back design rather than uh, having the lock inside the liner. And uh, it's very sharp. I've used it a few times for minor um, tasks around the house, but mostly it stays in this bag. Oh, what could this be? <laughs> That's a magazine full of uh, 380 ammunition and it's actually uh, poly case um, with their fluted design of polymer and powdered copper bullet. I've tested these out on water, uh, jugs full of water, and they seem to have quite an effect on them. They don't have truly uh, outstanding penetration after they go through a, let's say, a two liter bottle. But that's kind of what you want. You want them to expend their energy on the target that you're intending to shoot and not go uh, ranging off into the wilderness and hit something you didn't intend. So I'm okay with that. Then we have some peppermint starlight mints there. Those came from a restaurant that we like to go to, and I just save them. So they're good for making your mouth taste okay if you get a little crud in there, or trail dust, or whatever. Um, this is some MRE chewing gum, another Starlight Mint. There's a piece of <laughs> piece of regular gum, Wrigley's. Uh, I don't know what, probably Double Mint. Another MRE toilet paper because you can't have too much of that when you're on the go, right? little packet of uh, sugar out of an MRE. It says 4 grams on it. 
and the uh, all important light my fire fire steel actually this is a Coughlin's brand but it's a fairly beefy one that's probably seven millimeters across something like that maybe eight MRE creamer salt moist towelette powdered instant coffee I'm not a coffee drinker but I'll tell you what if I was cold and I had coffee creamer and some sugar I certainly would use it and something in here what is that? something in here is very sticky and I probably ought to get it out of there oh my goodness what is this Okay, <laughs> let's not put Jolly Ranchers in our bug out bag anymore. That, they must have melted in the heat in the back of the car in the trunk. Those are going right in the trash. I've got a mess down in there, a sticky mess. Okay, so this in the second middle pocket here has an inside pocket as well, two sides to it. <laughs> My survival whistle, that's an Oscar Mayer Wiener whistle um, that I got when the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile came through town. <whistles> Fairly loud. I have two or three of those, so I thought I'd put one in there. Catadine water purification tablets, each one good for a liter. And I have four of them in there. <clears throat> this is uh, actually the heater packet from an MRE needle, where the this is the water activated heater goes inside of this packet. And I used it, cleaned the packet out, washed it out, dried it, folded it up, and this is now my water bag. You know they're about that long, and they're fairly sturdy. I don't have any worries about this particular bag um, uh, coming to harm inside the inside the pouch. More MRE chewing gum. I don't know why I got so much of that in there. More catadine tablets, so I got six of them in there. That's enough for six quarts of water. <clears throat> and here's uh, Tinder. This is the uh, kind that's essentially cotton with soaked in paraffin commercially prepared I didn't make that a couple of those nice thing about these is you can cut these up into six or eight pieces and use each one of them fluff them up with a knife so that there's some fiber uh, that's free and then you can strike your ferro rod and each one of those little pieces is good for a fire so you can make a lot of fire with just those two what else is in here these are the uh, trick kind of birthday candles that once you light them, if you blow them out, they start again. So they have a little bit of gunpowder in the wick, so it'll continue to fizzle and it starts to flame again. That's pretty handy if there's a little bit of wind going, and they might, a regular candle might go out. Those will not. And I'm wondering how will I all, get all of this stuff back in there again. Now, I'm a fan of matches and lighters, MRE matches here. Um, nothing wrong with starting a fire with a ferro rod, but if the conditions are okay for matches, why not use matches? That's a striker that came with that ferro rod. I took it off the string for easier packing. So, like I said, I see no reason not to use matches when they're available. I know how to start a fire with a ferro rod and a couple other ways, but matches are always easy. Keep them dry, they work. Make sure we got everything out. Okay, that's compartment number two, so I'm going to zip those two up. So I'll flap the breeze. <coughs> compartment number three, the big one in the back. <coughs> Push all this stuff over here. Separate so I know which one went in. Of 
quite a bit of stuff in there. All right, part number three. Uh, here we have a handkerchief or a neckerchief. And this is another bag that can be used for a water bag. Can't remember exactly what came in this, but it doesn't really matter. It's pretty stout plastic, thicker than your average um, <clears throat> garbage bag that you would line a kitchen trash can with. And it'll hold about a liter of water. Uh, so, another, another bag for carrying water. Handkerchief, good for many things, filtering water, one of them. Covering up your face and nose in a sandstorm and any number of tasks. We've all seen on YouTube and elsewhere how many ways these can be used. They can be used for a sling if you have a strain, sprained or a fractured arm. Any number of things. A little bit of medicine in here. This is just commercially prepared. There's Mucinex DM. That's for cough, uh, cough suppression and phlegm relief so you can cough up what's bothering you. Tylenol flu. Two of those or four capsules if you're feeling flu-like symptoms. Here we have a, I believe this might be a Coughlin's brand match case. It's got a liquid dampened compass in the top. And I'm looking at it right now from behind. I know which way north is as I sit here. And it's pretty much pointing that direction. It's got some cordage on the outside. A P whistle, P style whistle. Twist off the top. Strike anywhere matches. Several. These are not uh, treated with wax, and so they they are not uh, waterproof. But the container itself is. So there's another source of starting fires. Like I say, I'm kind of fond of matches. This is a handy little gadget that I got at Cabela's. It's a Smith's knife sharpener. It has uh, ceramic and uh, tungsten carbide sharpening stations there for um, for your knife. It has a whistle. Yeah, I didn't blow it as hard as I could, but I didn't want to. It has a light in it. Right there. Fairly bright, not too bad. And it's got a little diamond rod for doing serrations, serrated blades. And it also has a compass right there. And this one is also liquid dampened. It looks like it's off its post in there. I'm not sure how valuable it'll be at this point. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much useless once it comes off its little pig. Don't think I'm going to rely on that one if I get in a pinch. Because it's telling me that south is actually pretty much where north it really is. So um, I'm going to have to replace that compass. <clears throat> and here we have um, lifeboat matches again. There's a striker on the outside. There's some cotton in there for tinder if you needed it. I think there's a striker, there is, there's another striker on the inside of that. This is waterproof as far as what's inside it. This is a, happens to be Yuko, UCO brand. And so I like to have lots of matches. <clears throat> this is my headlight. This happens to be an Innova brand. The strap goes around your head. It doesn't have the strap for the top, I don't think. No. But it is adjustable for a lot of different head sizes. And it has three functions. Well, oh, this one you swipe to turn it on, so there we go. Swipe it again and again. Goes to flashing mode and then off. And then it also has red. I don't know if the red's going to work for me today. There. It's not as sensitive as I would like it to be. Especially for turning off. I have a dickens of a time getting it to turn off sometimes. 
there. But it turns on fairly easy, usually. And it has, it's pretty bright, it's fairly bright, so we're good with it. Once I get it turned on, I don't think I'm going to turn it off if it's nighttime until I'm set wherever I am. So it's got two red LEDs and one uh, three-stage white one. So it's bright, dim, and flashing. Second flashlight. Always a good idea to have two of everything if you possibly can, so I do. This is a mosquito, primarily a mosquito, but it's a biting insect coil. You wear that on your wrist. You could conceivably put it on your ankle. Probably even stretch big enough to go around your neck if you're being bothered around the face with bugs. These work pretty good. I wore one on the 4th of July. When typically around here in Boise there's lots of mosquitoes about that time of the year. And uh, I didn't get bitten at all, so they're okay. They don't cost much. These are a couple of hand warmers. There's two of them. And you can separate them down the middle there and open them up. And there's a little packet in there. And uh, it says seven plus hours for each one. And they do work fairly well. I've tried them out. Once they get warm, I uh, was out hunting a couple of years ago and had some of these with me, and I popped a couple of them and stuck them in the pocket of my jacket. And when my hands got cold, I put my, finger, my hands on my jacket and uh, warmed them right up. So, kind of handy to have. <clears throat> First aid kit. Just some basic stuff. These I have two of these in there, but these are... Um, compressed and dehydrated towels or hand towels. Put a little bit of water on those and they open up to be about 10 by 12 inches and um, they make a good washcloth. You could also use them for a uh, bandage or wet to dry bandage on a wound. So that's why they're in the first aid kit. <clears throat> so this is kind of the medicine kit here. Got some ibuprofen. Got some... Uh, I'm not going to open this up and take them out, but those pink ones there are um, Benadryl. Or, uh, you know, a generic brand of that. And I think there is also... Now yeah, maybe I will. I don't know how easy it is to open this little package. I bought the components for this primarily at REI. So there's Benadryl. I don't know if you can see that or not. Benadryl. Non-aspirin, so that would be Tylenol. These are um, laxative pills because you get bound up out there in the wild. A couple of those. That would be Tylenol. This is the same thing as Benadryl. It's an antihistamine. I don't get bothered much with uh, allergies, but if I get stung by a bee, um, I don't have an anaphylactic reaction, but my wherever they sting me will swell up, and Benadryl makes that go away pretty quick. So it's also useful if you're having trouble getting to sleep. Usually 25 milligrams of Benadryl will help you sleep, at least for a few hours. This is uh, Meprazole. So if you're having uh, problems with acid reflux or heartburn, that's usually pretty good. Looks like I opened this and used one of them. I think this is aspirin. Wouldn't be surprised. Ibuprofen again. And this is, looks like naproxen sodium. Yes, it is. It's a leaf, so that's a naproxen sodium. So this is just the medicine part of the kit. Some useful stuff. Covers a few needs from maybe a little bit of diarrhea, maybe a little bit of constipation, pain, itching, um, allergic reaction to insect bites, uh, pollen, Whatever you might be allergic to, Benadryl is pretty good for that. If you get hives or a lot of sneezing, other signs of um, seasonal allergy. And again, um, 
couple of laxative pills. And the leave, which is also uh, what they call an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. You take your pick on which one you like the best. I'm kind of partial to ibuprofen, but I will take aspirin. I don't really care for a leave, but I might not be the only one that needs to have something out of there. <laughs> okay, next. BZK towelette, and there's another one. That stands for benzalkonium chloride. Um, alcohol, or alcohol, Alka-Seltzer Plus cold tablets. These have aspirin in them, and they're really good um, for just generalized pain, headache, plus cold symptoms. And Tylenol cold, in case aspirin isn't for you. Triple antibiotic ointment, nice for to get a little cut, scrape, something like that. And you're out in the dirt, you want to keep it uh, from being infected. Clean it, put some of that on it. There's some Excedrin. And if you're going to have a wound and cover it with the triple antibiotic, then here are some Band-Aid brand bandages. I like Band-Aid brand because they stick. Some of the cheaper ones that you might get at the dollar store um, don't always stick, but Band-Aids do. Almost always. And there's a couple of smaller ones. Well, actually, this is a big one. This is a knuckle bandage. Sorry. <clears throat> Some more Band-Aid brand. Another knuckle bandage. And this is the first aid only brand bandage. They stick pretty good too, but not quite as good as Band-Aid in my, in my uh, experience. But they're okay, and these are the standard size bandages that you might put on a finger or something, as opposed to a knuckle bandage. And a little packet of bandages. Some first aid cream or ointment. Um, actually, I could probably pack all of those in there, and I might when I repack the kit. And down at the bottom here, we have just an old uh, cheap Charlie imitation Swiss Army knife. I think they called this the officer's model when it was actually made by Victory Knox. But you have a small drop point blade and fingernail file and scissors. The scissors work pretty good even though it's a cheap knockoff brand it's still better than nothing and of course it wouldn't be your main knife anyway. At least it wouldn't be mine. And uh, in keeping with the Swiss Army design we have a toothpick and we have tweezers, which can be handy. And these are okay. You could conceivably get a hold of a tick or a splinter with them. Better than nothing. So that's the first aid kit. I'm going to kind of scoop that stuff over there so I can repack it in this little container. And what do we else what do we have? Shelter. Okay. There's an emergency poncho. This is by Lifeline says it's uh, 50 to 52 inches by 80. Um, <clears throat> you could conceivably make a, a, a shelter to get out of the rain or just put it on and get out of the rain that way. Lots of uses for ponchos. You can find them all over the YouTube. How to use those. And another hand warmer. As I said, well, this is a toe warmer. This goes inside your shoes. Works the same way. Um, its exposure to air makes it initiate. It takes a little while for them to get up to their peak warmth and then they last for several hours. So you can put these, there's actually two in there. Um, you could put these down in your shoes and keep your toes warm. That can be important at times. What else do we have in here? Okay, last but least, <clears throat> this is my compact get out of town quick or survival in the woods uh, weapon. And is it loaded? Well, yes, because why? Rule number one, all guns are always loaded. Don't even have to ask if you remember that rule. I keep all my guns loaded all the time. We don't have any kids around. And uh, if I'm carrying it, it's loaded. If it's in my go bag and ready to go, it's loaded. We happen to be a constitutional carry state, but I also have a concealed weapons permit. I'm a former law enforcement firearms instructor. And... Um, so, does that excuse me from having a bullet in the chamber? Well, 
what good is a gun without a bullet in the chamber? So, there's uh, six rounds in the magazine. Again, that's ARX, uh, polycase ARX ammo. And one in the chamber, so seven. And now it is unloaded. And you can see that. Um, this is a pretty nice little little gun. I, I suppose at uh, close range enough you could probably take small game or even a deer if you're a good enough shot. Um, I think I would probably limit myself to small game like rabbits at a fairly close distance. I've practiced with it out to 15 yards or so and I'm good enough to hit uh, something the size of a coffee cup at that distance. So but the power of the 380 round is not such that you could really count on it to take down a big game like a deer um, unless you could really count on getting that shot uh, through the vertebrae or the brain or something um, otherwise you're just going to wound the animal and probably lose it but anyway there we have it so that's that's my um, multi-environment I guess you would say survival kit and I uh, pack that up and I usually keep that in the trunk of my car. And so I've got all that stuff with me if I go up in the woods driving around. If I get out and hunt, I, this has got a waist strap on it. I can put it on where it like a fanny pack or on the side. And I'm pretty confident that with the materials in there, if I needed to, I could spend the night. I try to hunt in areas where there's water because that's where animals are. And so I would not have to carry too much water with me. I have things to gather water with and purify it. Really don't have anything to cook in there, but I can go a few days without eating if I had to. Um, if I catch an animal to eat, uh, pretty easy to find a, a sapling, make a spit, and roast it over the fire. So I'm not worried about pots and pans with this setup. This is just basically to get by until rescue for a few days. So there's signaling stuff in there, there's defense stuff in there, there's lighting there's cooking, there's signaling, um, first aid, you can make a shelter, you can build a fire, and there's a little bit of food in the way of candy in there. So uh, that's it. That's what we got, and uh, thanks for watching.